Sylvie from Canada. I'm writing to you because of what I have heard about the treatment that non-heterosexual members of Scientology receive. Debbie Cook had to endure 12 hours of standing in a garbage can with cards around her neck with the words lesbo, homo, etc. written on them, as well as being dunked with buckets of ice water. Actually, the cult seems to love to throw buckets of ice water on many members, not only the non-heterosexual ones, but on children too, as Jenna Miscavige described. Then there is the screaming, trying to make them admit that they are not normal. They should realize that if they are heterosexuals, it is because they were born that way. It is not a choice. How can John Travolta, as a bisexual, still be accepted and still be in the cult? Many former cult members have different and various allegations about this, but how can it be? Thanks for the question, Sylvie. Now, uh, just to clarify, Debbie Cook is not um, non-heterosexual. She's married. She's very, very much uh, heterosexual. And what you saw with her treatment in the whole, where she was, uh, she did testify in court uh, that under oath that she did have to stand in this garbage can and get dunked and have names, uh, things thrown at her, had be subject to uh, a lot of name calling and harassment and abuse there, but in this sort of group, uh, you know, really horrible sort of Lord of the Flies kind of situation. I mean, it was really bad. And that kind of thing still goes on, as far as we know, at the upper levels. I mean, we have no reason to believe that that, that behavior is stopped. I kind of thought for a while that the whole had been disbanded, but I turns out I'm wrong. And that really sucks, right? Now, what you're seeing there with those kind of slurs and, and insults and stuff thrown around at, at both Debbie Cook, other people, uh, in terms of the, the homosexual or LGBT accusations, is that... Scientology is homophobic. At its core, that's where they are at. It's right in the dogma and the scriptures. And I don't care what Elizabeth Moss or uh, the, the woman who's on Orange is New Black, or uh, I don't care what these celebrities go out and when they trot them out and they talk and they, and they give their lies about how Scientology is accepting and how LGBT are welcome. That's, that's bullshit, okay? Just to be really, really blunt. And I know that's, you know, I'm kind of like, whoa, Chris, but it is. It's bullshit. Scientology is a homophobic activity, and they hate homosexuals. They actually think that they are mentally ill and deranged and that they have evil purposes that they are operating on and that all people in the LGBT community are so deranged that they want to actually bring about the destruction of mankind as a species. That's where Scientologists' heads are at when they go into the dogma on it, when they go into reading what Hubbard said or wrote about it. Uh, not all Scientologists have been exposed to that material, but at this point, most of them have, because it's right in Dianetics, the Modern Science of Mental Health, and it's in the follow-up book to that that Hubbard wrote in 1951 called Science of Survival. Hubbard is crystal clear about this. I mean, he could not be more blunt about the fact, about how he feels about uh, what he calls perverted, you know, uh, gross behavior. Uh, okay, so that's the, if that's the attitude they have, then of course they're going to start, you know, when they start getting into the, the, the heavy abusive Lord of the Flies stuff, like I mentioned with the whole then this stuff comes out because they're, they're you know, these, these guys get into such this, they get into such a deranged mental state that, that it becomes, and, and because they are homophobic, then calling somebody a homo or lesbo or any other number of slurs they'll throw around. Uh, David Miscavige, for example, used to taunt uh, Mike Rinder and uh, Tommy Davis, who were his PR people, by telling them something about, I think he used to tweet, uh, not tweet, but uh, message them with private messages about how they were going to uh, end up, uh, they, they suck cock on Hollywood Boulevard or something. This was a thing that was that was made known. Um, I mean, Miscavige really, really uses this to slur his juniors, his, his junior executives. He used to uh, talk to a guy named um, um, uh, Guillaume Lesev and Mark Yeager, who were senior Scientology executives for a very long time, he used to taunt them about how they were both gay and wanted to, you know, have some kind of mutual love fest. When both of them are married, you know, uh, you almost have even had a kid. So, 
uh, not gay, right? And and I'm and I'm not putting that out there as though there's something wrong with being gay. I'm, I, I have no problem with it at all. What I'm saying is that they have a problem with it, and they use this in this in very insulting, abusive way. So how is it that John Travolta can still be a Scientologist when it's pretty clear from photographs we've seen and stories that have come out about him that there is this bisexual sort of uh, thing that he's got going on? Well, a couple of reasons. One, he is one of Scientologists' oldest remaining celebrities. He's been a Scientologist since the 1970s. He is hardcore Scientologist. Uh, he, he really believes in it. And he really thinks that it helps him, helps him and it helps other people around him. And he promotes it. He promotes it everywhere he goes. Uh, so, you know, losing that by calling him out, like internally, you know, uh, torturing him uh, would not be a good idea. And I think David Miscavige has enough self-awareness and an awareness of the situation to know that if John Travolta were exiled from the church or kicked out or somehow did a Leah Remini where he got, you know, raked over the coals so badly that he just said, okay, screw this, and he took off, that would be a PR nightmare for Scientology, way worse than when Leah came out. I mean, Leah came out, and she's all guns, and she did Scientology in the aftermath, and I mean, go Leah, right? I'm, I'm not, this isn't any denigration of Leah. I'm saying that John Travolta has been a hardcore Scientologist since the 70s. He comes out, and he starts bad-mouthing Scientology, and he starts talking about how they're homophobic and this and that. Ho, oh, ho. It's, you know, that would be, I think the only other celebrity abandonment that would be worse for Scientology would be if Tom Cruise left, which is never going to happen because Tom Cruise is a religious fanatic and a narcissist. But, uh, and so Scientology and him fit like hand in glove. So I'm never expecting Tom Cruise to leave. But if John Travolta were to start suffering a lot of abuse at the hands of David Miscavige or other, or at his, at his orders, which is the only way that Don, John Travolta would ever suffer any abuse, um, then he'd, you know, I think he'd just be like, okay, enough of this. And that would be that. So, um, so that's, that's kind of my take on that, right? Is he's a, he's a high power celebrity within the church. You know, John Travolta hasn't had a hit movie in a while. He's not like A-list celebrity anymore, but he's still, his, his name, he's got name recognition like you wouldn't believe, multi-generational name recognition. So, uh, so I think, Maybe I'm giving David Miscavige too much credit here, but I think he knows that the uh, consequences of, of messing around with John Travolta would be uh, catastrophic, and I think that's why he doesn't do it. And this also harkens back to the old rule that celebrities in Scientology can get away with things regular Scientologists would never be able to get away with. So whereas a, you know, you, me, regular person goes into Scientology and they have homosexual tendencies or they're bisexual or they're you know, trans or whatever— um, they'll, they'll service them at this point because it would be a PR nightmare if Scientology started kicking people out just on the basis of being homosexual but, uh, or LGBT, but they'll only service you so far. And, uh, and they'll get you in and they'll get you wrangled in and they'll get you convinced that Scientology is the be-all, end-all of everything. And then they start hitting you about your homosexuality or your bisexuality or, or whatever. And, uh, and by then, you're kind of in the mental trap of it. And so you kind of put up with some of that for a while, right? And maybe even start considering that maybe Hubbard was right. And maybe you do have a mental illness or disease or problem. And you need Scientology auditing. And you need to audit the gay away sort of uh, thing. I've, I, I knew homosexuals in Scientology who had bought into that and got and paid thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars for Scientology auditing to audit the gay away. And I, I didn't see it work. I just saw that it, they suppressed it. They suppressed the hell out of it and tried to pretend that uh, it's like gay conversion therapy. You know, they, they, you can suppress it, but you can't get rid of it because in, in almost all cases, it's not a choice. It's, it's where the person's head is at and uh, just, and it's always been there. So, you know, that's kind of the case with that. So I hope that answers your question.